subject of football on television is the first topic we're going to discuss with Wimbledon manager Dave Bassett. Dave, are you pleased? Very pleased, yeah. Highly delighted. But I you weren't, were you? I mean, at, at one time, when I say you weren't, weren't you one of the people who at one time thought perhaps, let's do without football? Yes, originally I thought it might not be a bad idea to take uh, football off the television because uh, it, it might bring the fa fans back. But with hindsight now and looking back, we needed all other sport off the television as well to have a chance of doing that. So you're prepared to put your hands up and oh, say I was wrong in that yeah, case? Definitely. I think it's vitally important. It's been proved without doubt this year. And uh, it's important for our sponsors like General Motors and Canon, who support the Football League and the clubs, uh, that the television's needed. And uh, we've got to accept it. That's a fact of life. Good. Well, just how quickly things can change in what's happened to Swansea happened to Wimbledon. It's possible, anything's possible, but I don't think it will happen because uh, I think we're sensible enough to know what we can afford, we will spend, and it's uh, a business, whereas Swansea obviously haven't sort of done that correctly. They lived above their means mm. slightly. Now, Graham Taylor was our guest last week. He admitted uh, despair. He frightened me, he frightened a lot of people. Our response to it was quite remarkable. You've watched the interview. What, what were your thoughts about Graham's views? Well, I, I think he brought out a lot of good points and he stood up and said what some people have been feeling in the game. I'm not quite as despondent as, as, as Graham because I, I'm an optimistic person and I think there's a lot of good in football, but there are things in football that certainly need uh, improving. Uh, but he did say, I mean, if we can just take him, say, on one particular point, he said about the joy of playing. Is that something that you were challenging him about? I would. Uh, well, I, I'm, perhaps I misread it, but I think the, the joy of playing, the players are enthusiastic, they're as dedicated as, uh, well, more dedicated than they've ever been. Uh, I think the players do tremendously well. Uh, whether you're saying the joy of playing or the public appreciate that, I'm not sure. And what about the people who run the game? He felt very strongly there that there should be football people involved. He said that originally it was the butcher, the baker and the candlestick maker. Your thoughts on that side of it? Well, I think uh, one thing that's important uh, that does worry me, that we've got three governing bodies in this country. We we've have got the FA, the Football League, and you're talking about the English the schools. schools. And they all work in different uh, directions. They're not governed by one person. And I think that's uh, counterproductive. I mean, we supposedly uh, gave football to the rest of the world. Well, the continent, you don't have three governing bodies there. I would like to see one governing body look after football so you don't get any difference of opinions. Um, one governing body? Would you also perhaps like one person in overall charge, a football man, and, and Graham felt strongly about that. He suggested Gordon Taylor at this moment, just off the top of his head. Yeah, I, I think it's important that we have a football man uh, who's been steeped in football, perhaps as a player, a manager, who's got a vast experience. But also I think the game needs marketing. I don't think we market it and advertise it as well as we should. I would like to see something like a Mark McCormack consultancy coupled with a, a football man that knows uh, what football's about. It's got to be somebody who cares about football and not care, doesn't care about individual clubs. He cares about the professional game and uh, the semi-professional club and what's happening to football in this country. What about the affinity between players and the man on the terrace? I mean, you can only play, pay certain wages, but obviously there are players who are earning 120, 150, 180,000 pounds a year, which is remarkable. And Graham again felt strong that as once we lose that, then obviously there is a real problem. Yeah, there, I think this is a point. I'm, I'm not certain how much that comes to, into effect. I mean, at our place, the players would like to earn what the people on the terraces earn. Uh, but going on to the higher sort of star players, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. That's up to the clubs. The clubs uh, have got so much to spend. If they want to pay their players more than they can afford, that's not the player's fault. The player's entitled to get the best deal he can. Um, it's up to the clubs to decide, can we afford to pay it? If not, then this is the maximum we can offer. So at the end of the day, if some club wants to end up like a Swansea and uh, going bankrupt, that's their problem. And they pay the penalty of that, like any business. You've always been a chirpy person. I mean, we know Graham Taylor to be a very op optimistic person, but clearly you do feel that it's not quite as bad a picture as he felt. He even said that football on a Saturday afternoon could end. Well, I don't like to feel that. I, I'm sure there'd be football. I'm, I'm sure uh, years ago in the 60s people were despondent before we won the World Cup. I think there'd be football on the television in 10 and 15 years' time, and uh, it's up to people like us to make sure it is on. 
For the moment, Dave, thanks very much. Your game, Dave, uh, the World Cup really could lift us all, couldn't it? Oh, it's, it's important, the World Cup. I mean, I'm looking forward to watching the games. I'm sure many people are. And if England and, and Scotland and Northern Ireland all do well, it'll give us all a great boost. I have one final little question to put to you. It's about eight years ago since Wimbledon came from non-league into the Football League. You've gone through, you're on the verge of the First Division. What would a Super League do to Wimbledon, the likes of Wimbledon? Well, it would... Uh, destroy it uh, for what Wimbledon's done. If you have a Super League and you don't have any uh, natural uh, entry into the Super League, uh, that would be wrong. You'd take the uh, achievement and the incentive out of life. And, and once the ambition away. That's right. And once you take the incentive and ambition out of life, to me, that would kill the game quicker than anything. Because all the enthusiasm, all your own enthusiasm That's would right. go with it. That's right. And all the players' enthusiasm as well. We can't have you losing your enthusiasm, Dave. <laughs> Thanks very much. <laughs> Sharp, what a fantastic goal! An unbelievable finish from Graham Sharp. Reach cross Gray, what a fantastic goal! And now Brazil, onside, good turn, brilliant. Olsen, deflection, goal! Bubble, being supplied by Beardsley, and he's made the gap this time. That's a fine goal! That is a really super goal! As the little lad said at the beginning, smashing. And uh, Match of the Day returns on Sunday, January the 5th, just two weeks away, that, with uh, live coverage of an FA Cup third round tie, the East End battle between Charlton and West Ham. That's it from us. And uh, Dave, thanks very much for Pleasure. being our studio guest. Wimbledon, Sheffield United this afternoon. Yes. Good luck with that.